Leonardo da Vinci comes up in a lot of modern fiction. Sometimes it's just a mention or a reference to his art, but there are also plenty of times where he shows up himself. And I love judging these appearances. Some are pretty accurate, some are so-so, and some are just absolute batshit. I usually prefer the more accurate ones, but I also like some of the crazy ones like Vampire Leonardo. Why not? So that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about my top five fictional Leonardo depictions. So number five is Star Trek. Leonardo actually has a few appearances in Star Trek. He appears as a hologram in Voyager. And according to the internet, he's in some novel. I haven't read it, so I can't tell you anything about that. The appearance I want to talk about is from the original series. So spoilers from a show from like 50 years ago. Leonardo appears in season three, episode 19, Requiem for Methuselah. So in the episode, Kirk, McCoy, and Spock land on a planet and they meet an old man named Flint and a young woman named Raina. Long story short, Raina is a robot built by Flint who is an immortal man from Earth. During his thousands of years of life, he had taken on many identities, including Alexander the Great, Johannes Brahms, and Leonardo da Vinci. I just love how ridiculous this whole idea is. Like, is it accurate? No. Not just for the fantasy elements, but also it portrays Leonardo as like, this mean misanthrope, which is just wrong. The one accurate part is that Flint is a polymath like Leonardo, but the real reason this made the list is his outfit. The cape, the shine, the color. So many versions of Leonardo refuse to let him wear color. I'm just saying this is what he should wear. Hollywood, take notes. Number four, Mr. Peabody and Sherman. So Mr. Peabody and Sherman is an anime movie from 2014 based on Mr. Peabody's Improbable History, which was a segment on the TV show, The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle and Friends. Mr. Peabody is a talking dog and Sherman is his adopted human son. And they use the Wayback Machine to go on adventures through history. In the movie, they are traveling through time when the Wayback Machine starts to break down. They have just enough power to make it to the Renaissance, so Mr. Peabody's good friend Leonardo can help him fix the machine. And while they are working, Sherman and Penny play around with Leonardo's glider. He's only in the movie for a few minutes, and I don't really care for the part with Lisa Del Giacondo, better known as Mona Lisa. I just really like the idea of Leonardo working on a time machine. And he's voiced by Stanley Tucci. Hey, look, Peabody! It's my flying machine! My flying machine! Sherman? Sherman? Sherman, what are you doing up there? I'm flying! But Sherman, you don't know how to fly! I don't? No! There's not much else to say. It's a short part of the movie. There was a segment of the original show with Leonardo, but I wasn't into it. I prefer his movie version. By the way, there's a similar plot point in Black Adder back and forth. Black Adder and Baldrick build a time machine based on a Leonardo design. But he's not actually in the special, so I couldn't include it. In third place, there is Cat the Time Explorer. This is Cat. I know her hair is a mess. I haven't had time to fix it yet. So Kat is a doll from the Stardust Classics doll line from the company Just Pretend. Stardust Classics only had three dolls, Laurel the Wood Fairy, Alyssa Princess of Arcadia, and Kat. And like all good doll lines, there are books. So Kat's books are about her and her aunt visiting different periods in history. And in Kat and the Missing Notebooks, 
she visits Florence in 1505. So naturally, she meets Leonardo da Vinci while he is working on his Bell of Anghiari. In the book, his notebooks get stolen, so Kat and her new friend Pietro have to go save them. And of course, use his glider. I like how this book sprinkles in little facts from his life, like how often he failed to complete his projects, and that he didn't know Greek or Latin. And then at the end, they have more to explore. This has more information about Leonardo and about Renaissance Italy, and a few projects, including a recipe for biscotti. Ask an adult to help you make a batch. Okay, I need to find an adult. Also, so this is her outfit from Cat and the Emperor's Gift, where she meets Kublai Khan and Marco Polo. They did make a blue Renaissance style gown for this book, but I don't have it and I cannot find it. The company closed in 2001. I've tried eBay, Google, Mercari, even Facebook marketplace I don't know I'm just going to have to make my own anyway number two is ever after if you don't remember ever after is a movie starring Drew Barrymore it based on like Cinderella and Leonardo is her fairy godmother okay let's start with the inaccuracies obviously the whole story with Danielle is fictional also the timeline doesn't quite add up Leonardo did go to France during the reign of King Francis, but when he arrived, Henry wasn't even born, and Henry ended up being born about a month before Leonardo died, so I don't think they were friends. One semi-accurate detail is the boat shoes. Leonardo did design shoes to walk on water, but they were most likely never actually built and they also didn't look like little boats. But for this one, it's just the vibes. Like, he's kind, he's friendly, and he never takes anything too seriously, including himself. Oh, brilliant! Why, that was pure genius! Yes, I shall go down in history as the man who opened the door just here for a good time and that just rings true I mean everyone who knew Leonardo loved him and it's not for his work because he famously did not do work people just liked having him around there's a musical version of the movie but all you can find online is like one song and first place is surprise surprise Assassin's Creed. Pretty much anyone who knows me knew this was going to win. Something I love is that it shows him when he's young. There are other works that do feature young Leonardo, but most focus on him when he's old. And I love that he's blonde. It's a small detail, but one that nobody ever gets. Now, his outfit could be a bit more colorful, but at least it has some color. His portrayal is decently accurate, despite a little fudging with the timeline. The gameplay doesn't go too deep into his life beyond the fact that he left Florence at some point and later worked for Cesare Borgia for a while. And it includes some of his actual inventions, even though they were probably never actually built in his lifetime. And of course, these inventions include his glider. The encyclopedia has a little bit more information about his life, like about the horse statue he never finished. And personality-wise, he's nice and helpful and fun and canonically gay. Do not let a beautiful girl distract you from constructing my designs. I have no worries. Women provide little distraction. This is also one of the few versions that includes Salai, and he's great. By the way, I recently bought this tote bag in Vinci and like, is it just me or is that his outfit from Assassin's Creed? I don't know, I'm not a fashion historian. Maybe this was a popular look back in the time. I just found that interesting. 
So that's my list. What do you think? Are there ones I should have included instead? Do you think Star Trek Voyager is better than the original series? Do dolls freak you out? See ya!